Uh, I've been with AWS more than two years now. Uh, prior to that, I worked in the auto industry close to 20 years, uh, working in various capacity, OEM as well as tier one. And uh, based upon my experience and knowledge, there are a lot of opportunities, especially with Gen AI use cases. So we will talk about one of them today. So, so I think this is a, a representation I had from my last session as well. So how uh, the flywheel works across the uh, entire ecosystem across the automotive industry, starting from manufacturing. I think we saw some use cases earlier in the presentation, and then from there, how the customer picks it up, the vehicle experience, user ex shopping experience, where an assistant can play a role. Similarly, when it comes to the experience side of it, where the customer is driving the vehicle, especially having questions around the vehicle or any any kind of uh, queries, an assistant comes in and plays as a role. And then when you go to the dealership and they want to uh, uh, experience like schedule service appointments or any kind of interaction, again, assistant plays a role. And then if you go back to the back of the service bay where the technician is doing a service to the vehicle and if you have questions related to the vehicle or any kind of technical service bulletins that has been released, and get more details around it or any kind of uh, user manual or wiring diagrams, they are again, assistant plays a role, AI assistant plays a role. So you can see the, the touch points across AI assistant across the entire ecosystem. So today we're gonna to talk about two things. One is I'll talk about what is Amazon Q business and then I will go walk through a demo along with how to even build uh, an app using Amazon Q business and and also uh, some of the uh, metrics on a Q and a run by Q and a and I think the and the main problem statement for today's uh, use case is around given the vehicle manual currently is in larger in size close to 200 300 pages and a lot of times people customers don't spend time reading through the going through the manual and imagining this manual can be integrated through this assistant app and that can be leveraged uh, in different forms that will allow them to uh, get answers to the questions or any kind of uh, information that they are looking for through this uh, through this AI assistant app example how to replace an air filter it's a basic question kind of thing so this is just a quick uh, metrics. According to Gartner, there is like eight, more than 80% of the AI apps have captured public Im imagination uh, uh, and they are hoping by, and it will enable them by 2026. And this is another, another metrics around developer productivity where they're thinking both from developer as well as uh, technicians productivity uh, expects the productivity to be increased by 30% on an average uh, with leveraging Gen AI use cases. Okay, so what is generative AI tech stack that uh, AWS has? So you can see there are three layers of it. So the bottom layer is where the infrastructure comes in play, where you can use foundational models to train them and generate inference using GPUs, inferentia. Uh, New uh, capacity blocks and then a SageMaker kind of um, infrastructure components. And then the middle layer is where, in order to uh, build LLMs and then also other uh, foundation models, there is, we have a, uh, Amazon a service called Bedrock, which takes care of multiple things. One is it has agents where you can orchestrate your application logic. And then guardrails, especially to protect against uh, data and then also protect against um, content. That is where guardrails come in as, along with security. And then of course, customization capabilities along with knowledge base and, uh, and also managing your um, bedrock applications. And then at the top layer is where there is the application stack that uh, that is built on top of Gen AI that is, support, that is designed to support different use cases or customers like Amazon Q for business, as an example, is meant for uh, providing assistant AI assistant apps and other functions integrating with different uh, data sources. 
Amazon Q in developer is more for geared towards developers. If they want to write code in say in their native language like Python or C sharp or Java, it gives you access to uh, Amazon Q that gives you helps them to increase productivity and helps them to design best practices in coding. Amazon Q and Q side is more from a reporting perspective where if you want to query uh, some of the data set that you have in the report and also get insights, QuickSight is one of, uh, that is where Q and QuickSight is integration. And then the last one is, today we have us in Q and Connect, which is from the call center perspective from people, uh, if uh, products that require technician involvement and how it can also streamline uh, using Q. So those are the different aspects of it. And this this is generally available starting from uh, end of April 30, uh, 2024, this year. So the main focus today is going to be Amazon Q. So what is Amazon Q? Amazon Q is a, a fully managed service that deploys uh, Generative AI business expert for your enterprise data. Uh, it comes with a built-in user interface uh, where users can ask complex questions in natural language uh, against their documents and then generate document summaries and also interact with third-party applications. For example, if you have data in different data sources, you can have integrations as well. So let me go to the next screen. That is where I can talk about the architecture of it. As you can see, the architecture is pretty straightforward. On the left side, you have different data sources where business can, Amazon Q business can connect to 40 popular enterprise data sources, which includes starting from simple storage service, Salesforce, your databases like RDS, Aurora, and then WorkDocs, and then plugins, favorite plugins like Jira, uh, Zendesk for creating tickets, Slack, and then popular other tools like Google Drive, MySQL, and then you can crawl your websites, which is really, really powerful where you can crawl your site and then the assistant can play a role in answering questions. And then in the middle is where the Amazon Q business, which is really where you define your application, which is really where you create an application and then you connect to your data sources where you can connect to an existing retriever like Kendra, or you can connect to your native data retriever sources that I talked about. And then once those, once you connect to the data source and index those content, then on the right side as an user, then can interact with the Q business application through their front end application where it can be through a front end or it can be through other means and ask Questions, those questions then gets passed to the Q business uh, service, which then looks up the data that you have indexed and then tries to get answers and then formats the response and gives it back to the user. And then as far as a user management, you can, you use a I am identity user center where you can manage access to the user who has access to what data, what application, and then provide a set up guardrails around it. So that is what in a nutshell, how Amazon Q for business works. So now let me walk through the demo of Amazon Q business from our from the AWS console. So I have logged into our, the AWS console that we have, and then you can see there are a lot of services you have. So now if I look for Amazon Q, it's going to pop up Amazon Q and then you can see Amazon Q for business. So when I click Amazon Q for business, for the first time, if you're doing it, it is going to show, if you have already created applications, you're going to see the list of applications that have been created. So in my case, I've created three different applications. And if you are going to create for the first time, all you do is click create application and then say, give a name to the application And then you can pick different service access that you can design and also the encryption. And then and then you, if you have already integrated with your IAM identity center, then it will try to use that identity center as your basis. From there, it continues to navigate to different data sources, add groups and users. So that is like in a simple 
uh, four step guiding process. For, so for today's conversation, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, go back to my existing application, which I'm gonna to demonstrate today, which is automotive demo. I'm gonna click this application to show the, the things that I've already configured for this one, which includes the data sources, and then the retriever settings that I already, the web experience settings already have, and also the different, uh, na the name of the application, and all those backend functions. And then uh, I can go and click the data source, and that data source will then point to where I can pick those data sources that I'm needed for, and then from there I can uh, continue plugging into those data sources. So let me go back uh, again here. And then I can also do some kind of custom actions here where I can set up admin controls, uh, basically block words that are not, that, that you don't want to, uh, the users to basically, whatever the users are asking, you can filter those words that are not applicable from this interface and then also you can put some controls in place uh, you can create different controls and then you can also use those plugins that you need to do especially if you want to use Jira, Zentesk these plugins can be integrated as well and then if you want to enrich your document this is where you can do some additional logic on top of it to help you to filter those content and then provide a, a comprehensive response to the user. So there are, these are the, some of the enhancements you can do to the, to your application. And then, and then this is the data source I have created today, which is really my data source where I have pointing to an S3 bucket where I have a ma user manual uploaded. And that manual basically is uh, indexed. So it, I can, when I ask a question to the application, then it will use the indexed content to look for that uh, the, the right matching response. And then it comes back with a response that is more human friendly in nature. In addition, I can also add different data sources, which is really where I can crawl a site by pointing to the website uh, that I want to crawl, or I can, use the existing data sources like databases, RDS databases, your code document or your Slack and so on. So there are many ways to connect your data source, which is a key for this application. And then from there, you are basically uh, asking questions to the application or if the user has a question, then they go back to the application and, and query those, uh, uh, looking for those answers. So with that said, what I'm going to do right now is to walk through this application that I have built, which is an automotive de demo. So this is the endpoint URL for this application. And when I click this, it's going to come with an interface where I have given a description about what this assistant is about. This is an automotive assistant that is going to answer questions uh, based upon the manual that I have uh, indexed in the backend data source. And also I have loaded some sample uh, technical service bulletin information as well as uh, some recall information so that I can uh, query this assistant and then get some answers. On the left side, you see the different chat conversations I already had with this assistant that is shown on the left side. So it, it maintains that chat conversation up to 30 days. So let me start with a simple question here. How to replace air filter? So when I post this and quite this question, it is going to look for that information in the manual and then it, it comes back with a, a response by constructing it more human readable so that you get to see how to replace the air filter and it gives you the steps. Uh, how to uh, do that in in a step by step approach, and then also it shows the source of the information where it, it basically got it from, which is where the manual that I indexed I've indexed before where I've uploaded in my S3 bucket. So this is a simple 
uh, how to replace air filter. So if you want to go a little deeper, for example, what are the materials needed to replace air filter, for example? So then it goes and looks for that information again in the same document. It finds information, basic information about each one is only, so it, it is not able to give you the step-by-step -step procedure because the manual does not have more details, but it just gives you a high-level information. And then if, if I'm looking for a different type of information, for example, I see a engine, I mean, I see, I want to know when, I want to know what is the time to replace, change my oil filter, I mean, oil level. So, so basically, you are asking what is the indication that will be shown in my vehicle when my oil level is low so it's it's looking for that uh description about where you will see it so it's it it finds that relevant information saying usually there will be a low engine oil pressure indicator when there is an when the oil level is low uh, so that basically means change engine oil soon or all change required so again this information came back from the manual so it can it can become more interactive when you start uh, asking more questions. So, for example, I want to, as a dealership technician, uh, he, he wants to know there is a, a technical service bulletin information related to an indicator lamp, a malfunction. So he posts this question, uh, a malfunction indicator lamp being eliminated. So how do you do that? How do you service that? So, so this is, uh, publicly referenceable technical service bulletin that has been published for a vehicle. And then it gives you uh, what are the different things you have to do it and what type of engine, what kind of uh, steps to do it and additional details around it. And that basically source comes from a sample technical service bulletin as well. And then example, if you're looking for any kind of uh, recalls, for example, any recalls to my high-end vehicle, then it goes and if you post that question, then it go, is going to look into a recall uh, database and then it's it can of pulls that for high end vehicle example. There are a bunch of recalls for the different model years 2022, 2021, 22. So again, this data source again comes from a recall uh, database that I've uploaded as well. So you can see using the assistant, you are able to uh, handle different uh, use cases, sub use cases you can think of from a user perspective or a user vehicle manual or a technician perspective from a technical service bulletin or maybe a you know, dealership uh, when you are doing a service appointment. If they are looking for any kind of recalls related to your vehicle, they can associate that as well. So it, it, the assistant tries to solve the different use cases with the right data sources. So that's all about the Amazon Q business demo. Let me go back to the presentation. So if you are interested to learn more about generative AI and how to transform your business, these are some of the uh, trainings we have. You can scan the QR code, especially Skill Builder has it. And then also we have accelerated training, which you can talk to your account teams and get some information about how to get familiarized with the general offering that AWS has today. And uh, just a FI, so Amazon Q for business, like I said, went uh, GA in April. So for the next 60 days, uh, Q for business pro and light is available at no charge until Jan June 20, June 30, 2024. And then from July 1st, you can start doing free trials and then up to 50 users. And then uh, you can also subscribe to that Amazon Q business subscription as well. So you can reach out to your account teams or you can check out Amazon AWS website for more details about that. So as I said, use cases are critical to leverage Gen AI uh, backbone, especially the Bedrock service or Amazon Q for business and Q for developers. So I think figure out the right use case and then leverage all the Gen AI capabilities that AWS offers today. With that said, uh, I'm done with my session and uh, Q any Q&A 
hold these people to ask questions. Thank you so much, VJ. It's great to see real world use cases for for Q in the in the vehicle. It's excellent. Thank Any you. questions uh, from the from the audience? Q and A uh, chat or or raise hand feature. I have one for you, VJ. Okay. Um, would you be able to speak a little bit about how AWS handles data protection and 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 security? Uh, so, for instance, you know, can I can can I opt out if if to ensure AWS is not using um, data for any service improvements? Yeah, exactly. It's a good question. So, I think so. The data protection comes in different flavors. So, Amazon Q for business, for example the data source that i was using for my demo so the data that that you used for indexing or training the uh, the application stays within your vpc so in that case the data is within the context of your application in that vpc but when you come to amazon q for developer there are different versions of q for developer especially when you are using it with your integrated development environment so if you are using uh, the amazon Q Developer Pro, uh, it, we do not use the, your content for any service improvement. But if you are using an Amazon Q Developer Free Tier, uh, it may use certain content for service improvement. Uh, example, for example, to provide better response to common questions or fix Amazon Q operation issues or debugging. So, so there is guardrails around it. So the data is uh, in your control and how based upon the type of subscription you have. Okay, thank you. No problem. Any Thank other you. questions, folks? Yeah. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you. And uh, please share your feedback. Thanks for your time and uh, looking forward.